So I'm here with Roy Towers, and um, Roy's a man of many hats here at the Ness, aren't you? You play a big role in the uh, the visitation, and um, Roy does a lot of the site tours and um, with the public that come around. Two a day, you do? Two a day, two yeah. A day. Yeah, the third one's done by the Historic Environment Scotland Rangers, mm -hmm. uh, because three, I would lose my voice completely. <laughs> and you have started to already, it's been it's a long just season about, so far. Yeah, it's been it? a long season. Yeah. yeah, and you had a big part to play in our guidebook, the second version especially, that we've just released recently, Digging mm -hmm. Deeper. Yes, well, I used to be a journalist many years ago, so writing comes quite easily to me. So it was, it was easily enough done. But mm. um, lots of cooperation from all the other people involved as well. Yeah. And how was it you came to be involved with the project originally? Oh gosh, that's going back many, many years because I was here from the beginning uh, when we were actually digging on top of the putative brock out there, which turned out to be the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been before that. I've been um, I've been digging in um, various sites around Orkney, uh, Minehow, Nows of Trotty, uh, some around the Bay of Firth. Mm -hmm. um, and I, do you know? I can't remember exactly how it happened. My specialisation had always been pottery, mm -hmm. and uh, my digging days were coming to an end because through digging too much, I damaged a, a, a knee. Yeah. Uh, so I had to stop digging. I can kneel down, but I can't get up very easily. So uh, the, the pottery became um, much more important, and I've been working on the pottery assemblies now for years. And that's certainly something we have in spades at the nest, isn't it? It's oh, we, yes. Well, two years ago we counted, and I think we had 40,000 plus yards, and there must be many more now. Thank We've certainly had some interesting pieces this year, haven't we? I know that the um, the area between structure 10 and structure 12, with the, um, the curving wall of what's called structure 26, that we've now delved into the depths of a little bit more, um, there was a piece of pottery that exhibited a pattern and um, techniques that are not too dissimilar to Dorrington walls and pottery that was found there. Yeah, it uh, was vertical applied cordons, which is, is uh, a mark of part of the Dorrington walls famous site in England. Uh, but also from out of there, there was um, a, a piece of pot which was from a very, very big vessel and it had sort of teardrop applied pieces of uh, fired clay on the outside, making a pattern. And it actually is very similar to what's called heavy plastic uh, decoration from places like Rigno and Rossi and uh, also Scarabri. Mm -hmm. And also the incense cup which Claire found in structure 26, which is incredibly ah, rare, isn't it? It's extraordinary. Um, it really was, and we were so lucky because Claire had just finished her uh, MPhil thesis on mm. incense cups. Mm. Now, I'll be absolutely honest with you, if I'd seen it, I would not have recognised it as an incense cup mm. because I have never actually seen one in the flesh. They are very, very rare. Mm. Uh, and she's seen a few examples, obviously, uh, in, in England where, where she works. Yeah. So that was an amazing piece of luck and an amazing find. It's that link to um, that, that link certainly to mainland Britain. Isn't it? And um, as as we know, it's about four examples possibly, um, and of which two come from the sort of Stonehenge environment, and mm -hmm. one certainly from from the site itself, which is amazing to think that we've got that kind of shared culture. Uh, yeah, certainly there were there were uh, interchanges and travel and um, just back and forward in the Neolithic. I mean, Grooved Ware is 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 a good example because it, the oldest dates we have for it so far are from here. Uh, and then it's, you can trace dates as it goes further south mm -hmm. and eventually it's over all of Britain and uh, quite a large part of Ireland. And we don't know why it was so attractive, it, presumably it must have something to do with the decoration yeah. um, and we can't understand that, we can't decipher that now but as the pots are all pretty much the same sort of form, mm -hmm. it must have been the decoration yeah. uh, which must have had meanings which were attractive people to people uh, far and wide, and they wanted them as well. We haven't done a comparison between the decoration on the stone and the decoration on the pot, mm. partly because um, the huge nature of the, the pottery assemblage means that we haven't got through um, an awful lot of it yet. We've, we've skimmed through it and we've found interesting things which we've brought out, um, but there's much more detail of what needs to be done. And when we, when we get on with that, uh, we will be able to, to, to draw comparisons, I hope, between the decoration and the stone, at least some of the decoration on the stone, because it's a, a different medium, mm. hard, as against 
plastic for yeah. the clay. So you could do different things with the two mediums, but there will be similarities, I think. Mm. I'm very conscious that we need to think about saving your voice for future tours and things like that. <laughs> so and, um, we're getting towards the end. Yes, yeah, oh, it's just about that kind of breaking point for a lot of us. I think if it's not physical, it's, it's sort of voice in your case and things like that. But um, we've got our second open day coming up on Sunday, the 20th of August, and we're going to have a few extra tours going on throughout the day, aren't we? There'll be a few other people dotted around. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you'll be kept busy. Indeed, indeed, mm -hmm. yeah. And the the enthusiasm of the people we're visiting is just extraordinary, and the numbers too, because. Yes. What was it? Uh, our, th our third, halfway through our fourth week, was it? No, our third week. Um, we got to around about 10,000 mm -hmm. visitors. And the, the, the tours are just getting bigger and bigger. Normally, we would have, well, in past years, we would have had maybe 30, 35. Today, I've done two on the first one, about 87 people, and 75 on the second. Mm -hmm. It's just absolutely immense. And they are all enthused and you can't get away with them from them because they want to ask you yeah, questions all the time. You finish a tour and then you're, you're sort yeah. of answering questions yeah, for that, 10 minutes. That, that's great. I mean, yeah. if they've had a good experience and, uh, and they're, you know, they're keen to learn more, that's just great. That's good for us. Yeah, absolutely.